Victoria Harbour is one of Hong Kong's finest natural assets. Since 2001, the pollution of its waters by sewage from Kowloon and the eastern end of Hong Kong Island has been greatly reduced by the implementation of Stage 1 of the government's Harbour Area Treatment Scheme, or HATS. This plant daily removes some 80% of suspended solids, thus avoiding discharging about 600 tonnes of sludge into the harbour. The treated effluent is then discharged via a submarine outfall into the harbour's western approaches. At present, HATS serves a population of some 3.5 million, providing collection and treatment facilities for the sewage from Kowloon and northeast Hong Kong Island, around 1.4 million cubic metres on a normal day, enough to fill 560 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The improvements in harbour water quality have been particularly marked in the eastern and central parts of the harbour, as the gradual return of quite fragile marine life is showing. These improvements will be further enhanced by Stage 2A of HATS, which will handle the remaining 25% or so of sewage from northern and southwestern Hong Kong Island. The eight preliminary treatment works on Hong Kong Island along the sewage catchment area will be upgraded and the treatment works at Stonecutters Island will be extended and upgraded. New sewage tunnels will run from North Point and from Aple Chow to Sai Ying Pun and from there across to Stonecutters Island. The total tunnel length will be 21 kilometres. That's about one-third of the distance between Hong Kong and Macau. The depth of these tunnels below sea level will range from 70 metres to 160 metres. This maximum depth is almost equivalent to the height of Jardine House. The HATS 2A sewage conveyance system will initially serve some one million people, conveying about 450,000 cubic metres of sewage per day enough to fill 180 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Using deep hard rock tunnels under the seabed, instead of trenching and laying pipes, means that no road excavations are needed. Traffic is not disrupted and the impact on the public is minimised. No building foundations are impacted and future land development is not constrained. Following detailed feasibility studies, a consultancy covering investigation, design and construction of the sewage conveyance system was let in early 2006. Such deep tunnels nevertheless present clear design and construction challenges. Deep hard rock subsea tunneling is a highly specialised branch of civil engineering, especially given the potential for flows of groundwater and flooding from the sea. Norway proved to have the most abundant relevant experience of such work, so project visits were undertaken by the Drainage Services Department to study state-of-the-art practice. A carefully staged approach, commencing with detailed desk studies and ending in a comprehensive ground investigation, was planned and carried out. Both vertical and inclined boreholes were sunk some of which targeted key geological features, including fault zones. In order to obtain continuous long rock samples, or cores, at the level of the tunnels, a technique recently developed in Norway, known as horizontal directional coring, was used. This employs an eccentric coring bit that can be precisely steered. The cores obtained provide detailed information about the geology along the planned tunnel route. The water inflow into the cored hole is measured to estimate the inflow into the tunnels during the construction stage and thus enhance safety. All soil and rock core samples are securely stored for reference and viewing by tenderers for the construction contract. The investigation phase also involves visual inspection and photographic and thermographic surveys of any structures that might be sensitive to the tunnelling works. Such surveys provide a baseline for measurement and monitoring during the construction phase.
The Drainage Services Department and the project consultants together critically reviewed the alignments and the depths of the tunnels so as to minimise nuisance and promote overall cost reduction. They took into account both earlier and newly gained knowledge of the geological conditions. The review also checked any encroachment of works onto private land. The Western Harbour Tunnel area was skirted, for example. A number of value management and risk management workshops were held during this phase. The tunnelling methods and alignment also had to be acceptable to residents living in districts near the works. So, as early as 2004, the government had mounted an extensive public consultation exercise on HAT Stage 2. Six district councils and the Harbourfront Enhancement Committee were also thoroughly briefed and consulted on several occasions. Members all indicated their broad support having been reassured in particular about the various environmental measures contained within the tunnel construction contract. Dust, noise and vibration would be strictly monitored and effectively controlled. When the route for the sewage tunnels was gazetted in 2007, no objections were received. Two tunnelling methods will be adopted. For the twin tunnels from Aplechar to Aberdeen, horizontal directional drilling will be used. Since this is faster and more cost effective for tunnels of a relatively small diameter, in this case 600 millimeters. Further, the drill head can readily be steered around existing underground services by precision remote control. For all the other tunnels, with their larger finish diameters, the drill and blast method will be used. This allows ampler working space for installing temporary supporting structures. Other advantages of drill and blast are that there's no risk of a tunnel boring machine becoming trapped in a fault zone, and if difficult ground conditions are met, they can be flexibly dealt with. This method has proved very successful in safely managing groundwater inflows. Yet another advantage is that granitic rock spoil from the tunnels can be converted into commercially valuable aggregate. Blasting assessments for each tunnel and shaft are carried out to demonstrate that the vibration received by any neighbouring installations is within acceptable limits. The drill and blast cycle begins with surveying, probing, and pre-grouting. Holes are drilled, and then charged with explosive. Next comes the actual blasting. And the tunnel is ventilated. Spoil is removed and all remaining loose rock is scaled. Temporary supports may be installed and the rock faces are stabilised. Extensive grouting may be required. In February 2008, interested contractors, both local and overseas, were invited to a comprehensive briefing forum. The end of 2008 saw the issue of invitations to tender. The construction works of the sewage conveyance system started in July 2009 and are anticipated for completion at the end of 2014. Based on the estimate in 2009, the sewage conveyance system will cost about 8.2 billion Hong Kong dollars to construct. When the scheme is completed, Hong Kong will have one of the most modern sewage collection and treatment systems in the world and our clearer harbour waters will prove unfailingly attractive to residents and visitors. HATS Stage 2A A drainage services department project for a cleaner tomorrow.